If you've seen my videos on the Google Titan security key and the Yubico Series 5 YubiKeys, then it should come as no surprise that the next one that I'm reviewing is the Feitian IE Pass security key and the Feitian All In Pass FIDO2 biometric security key. Feitian Technologies was founded in the 90s and they have been making digital authentication products longer than I have even known that these kind of devices existed. They are a company out of China who have partners across the globe and certain certifications from credit card providers, Apple, and they are a part of the FIDO Alliance. So they provided me with two different multi-factor authentication tokens for me to review. So MFA, or multi-factor authentication, I've already talked about it previously, but I'll go over it shortly. This means that whenever I log into a social media platform like Twitter or Instagram, or I log into my email account, the website that I am logging into will require me to have more than one form of authentication. Now, while the username and the password are one form, having one of these physical devices is the second form. Anytime I log into the account on a new machine or I have to re-authenticate, then I will also need to plug this device into the phone or the PC to tell that device that I not only have my password, but I also have the multi-factor authentication token. That means even if somebody stole my password or my password got leaked, they would not get into my account without also having one of these devices in hand. So using a physical token adds another layer of security to your online accounts. So the two of these that I have in hand from Feitian work a little bit different from each other, so I'll go through each of them separately. So first is the Feitian IE Pass, which is FIDO2, FIDO, U2F compliant, and it comes with USB-C and Lightning for cross-platform support. It's $78 and it does not include NFC or Bluetooth. The second one that I have here is the All-In Pass, which is $110. This one is certified for use with FIDO U2F and FIDO2, and it can also be used for passwordless multi-factor authentication. So it has a biometric fingerprint reader, USB-C, NFC, and Bluetooth. So I'm gonna start with the IE Pass, which is the one that I feel like most people would use. This one comes in a metal form factor and it has a male connectors on both sides. One is USB-C and the other one is Lightning. So that means you can use it with any compatible mobile devices or PCs that have those inputs. Now, similar to my previous review, this one can also be used with any sites that support FIDO2, U2F, or additional multi-factor standards. It's also MFI certified with Apple to work with Apple products. The device itself is driverless, so you don't have to install anything. It works cross-platform, including on Linux, and whenever you use this to authenticate yourself, it stores the credentials on a secure chip inside of this device. It's compatible with a lot of the same sites that I have quoted for Titan and for YubiKeys. That includes Google and Gmail, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, GitHub, several password managers, including 1Password, Keeper, Dropbox. There's so many to list. So to give you an example of setting this up on an online account, I went ahead and added it to my Google account. Now you will notice that I already have two other keys set up on my Google account, and I'm not gonna delete those for this example, I'm just going to add the Feitian key as another option. Now you can add multiple hardware devices to an account if that online account allows you to do that. And I actually do recommend this for your most important accounts. So if you do lose a physical key or one gets stolen, you do have a backup option so you can still access your account and you could always log in to revoke access to the lost one if you did end up losing one of these keys. This is also very useful if you're a cross-platform user like I am, I do really prefer having all the different inputs available to me, including Lightning and USB-C. Now, once I want to sign in, it's a very similar process of inputting my Google account username and password, and then plugging in the Feitian key and pressing down on the sensor. Now, I find once I have these devices set up, it's faster than receiving a code via text message or unlocking my phone and typing in a six-digit code from from an app. It's also easier than unlocking the phone and approving a login from one of my registered devices on my Google account. And a little side note, I often log in here to revoke devices and add new ones. And I do suggest doing threat modeling and auditing your registered devices now and then, especially if you upgrade often or if you're a tech reviewer on YouTube, definitely make sure that you don't have additional devices
devices on there any more than you need. So there's another really cool feature that I wanted to mention about this is you can actually use this as a one-time password device, AKA OTP. So if you need to use sites that support OTP, which will give you a six digit code one time that changes each and every single time you log in, then you can set this up as an authenticator for those sites as well. All you have to do is open a text editor on your computer, input your Fateon key, and press the sensor on the front. In the text editor, you will output the OTP. So mine is not set up to authenticate with a one-time password, so mine is going to be the default 888-888. Now lastly, I wanted to make mention to the IE Pass Manager app for iOS and Android. This lets you store and access credentials on the device and set or change a PIN code to access those credentials. I have none stored at the moment. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the second hardware key. Okay, so this is the second one. It's called the Fateon all in pass key. It is FIDO 2.0 compliant and it can be used for passwordless logons like I'd mentioned previously. So a great example of this would be Windows Hello or Azure. This one can also be used with smart card readers using NFC and the ISO 14443 standard. It's similar to the other key. This one also stores credentials within the physical chip, but the difference is this one has Bluetooth, NFC, and this actual fingerprint reader on the front. The smaller one has a little capacitive button, but you don't need to register a fingerprint to use it. With this one, you do have to register your fingerprint to use it. Bluetooth lets you use it with mobile devices, and the USB-C port allows you to plug it into a PC using a USB-C cable, which is not included. I actually had to find a cable that allowed me to use it as a HID device instead of just a charging cable, so you might have a compatibility issue there if you don't have the correct kind of cable. With this one, you will need to enroll your fingerprint first off. And to do that in Windows 10, for example, I go into settings, account, sign in options, and choose security key. You then just follow the on-screen prompts to add the key, register it with a pin code, and then enroll your fingerprint or multiple fingerprints. You can then add it as a Bluetooth key under the Bluetooth settings on a Windows 10 PC. Hold down on the side button for five seconds, wait till it shows up in the settings, and then you can click add. Now mine did take a few tries because the built-in Bluetooth adapter for my PC is super cranky and terrible. Also side note, I do use third-party adapters for headsets whenever it comes to Bluetooth because it's that bad, so just FYI. So then once you have this set up, anytime you need to use it with Windows Hello or Azure, you will be able to touch the fingerprint sensor on the front of the Fateon key to log in passwordless. Now I don't use anything other than a local account, so I don't have a Microsoft account, nor do I use Azure joined PCs. So that's where I'm going to end this demo. But if you do though, once you have gotten the token set up on your account and you attempt logins, you will see the same kind of prompt you would with any other security keys, except this one will ask you to touch the fingerprint sensor. Fateon also has a really nice user manual that you can use to follow along with to configure password list in your Azure AD tenant. So I think using a biometric pass is really cool, but I do wish that it worked with more standards, more sites. I would definitely prefer using a passwordless fingerprint sensor over typing in a password plus another authentication method each time I wanted to log in. But for most consumers who don't have any accounts that are currently passwordless, even though I feel like that's the way the future is going to be, using a hardware token like the IE pass is probably going to be your best bet. For folks working in high security security spaces, or if you are managing a network of users, the biometric hardware key is very, very convenient. So if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to become a part of this amazing community and check out my Patreon and buy me a coffee links down below to see how you can support this channel and join folks like at Roni RK, at Tech Gear Talk, and Mac Attack who bought me coffees, thank you so much, and my newest s'mores via YouTube memberships, including Brett, Jano, Elizabeth, Eddie, and Rogelin. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me, and I really, really do appreciate it. Comment below and let me know if there's any tutorials that you would like to see me do a walkthrough with hardware keys or with anything really. Thanks again to my s'mores for subscribing and watching. I'm Shannon Morris and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.